The amazing world of Gumball is no stranger to some of the most eccentric characters in animation. Of course, this extends beyond just the friendly faces of Elmore. There's also no shortage of shady characters here. But which villains are misunderstood, and which are truly evil? I'm Kifinosi with Wicked Binge, and this is The Amazing World of Gumball Villains. Evil to most evil. Given the sheer variety and absurdity of Gumball's cast of characters, almost every character has been an antagonist at some point or another. So, for this list, we'll just be focusing on the characters who appear most consistently or most memorably as the bad guys in Gumball's adventures. Oh, and this should go without saying, but as frequently as the Watersons end up causing the conflict of the show, we won't be calling them villains for the sake of this list. With that being said, let's begin with the antagonists who don't quite fall into being outright bad people. These villains fall in the gray area. Let's begin our ranking with Sarah. While Sarah is by no means a bad person, she didn't make the best first impression for our two main heroes. Her first role as a main antagonist was in The Fan, where she revealed herself to be Gumball and Darwin's biggest fan, even having transferred to Elmar Junior High to be near them. She writes fan fictions about her heroes, stalks them, and watches them sleep, also recording herself doing so. That said, Sarah is far from malicious. For all her extreme social awkwardness, she's actually quite sweet, and not just because she's an ice cream cone. She She's just lonely, and all she wants is to be friends with Gumball and Darwin. While she can still cause trouble for Elmore, like accidentally shipping random characters with each other IRL in The Shippening, she's surprisingly thoughtful and does care genuinely for Gumball and Darwin as her friends, even if she still does overstep her boundaries a little bit sometimes. Next up is Billy Parham. Billy is notable for his sense of entitlement and arrogant attitude, perhaps shown best in the episode The Pest, where he begins to ruthlessly pester Anais because she didn't reciprocate his romantic feelings. After being told off by Gumball and a swift shoulder check from Anais, Billy seems to have learned his lesson and is more open-minded and nice in later episodes. Another reason why this literal egghead is so low on this list is that he's, you know, a toddler? He's a kid who's still learning and he deserves some leeway. Clayton might be shifty, literally, but he's not all that bad. Introduced as a pathological liar attempting to prevent Gumball and Darwin, he has a habit of exaggerating his achievements and day-to-day -day activities to show off to others. However, it's revealed later on in the episode The Move that Clayton is actually just insecure about himself, only exaggerating so that he can feel less boring and make more friends. At the end of the episode, he even scolds Gumball and Darwin for planning to frame Jamie for knocking out Tobias, showing that he actually has a decent moral compass. He also eventually wrestles an alligator to save Gumball, and keeps his promise to stop transforming into other residents of Elmore from then on, which is pretty cool of him. Leslie sprouts up just outside of the top three. Although sometimes creepy and off-putting, he's usually a nice guy, frequently offering emotional support and advice to his friends. However, Leslie is also undoubtedly a narcissist, and this drags him down down a bit. He's absolutely obsessed with his appearance, both in a physical and social sense. He has no issue with sabotaging others to preserve his own image, like in the episode The Triangle, where he tries to sabotage Darwin's solo out of jealousy and frames Gumball for it. For all his flaws, though, Leslie isn't all that bad of a person once he gets past his general vanity, which keeps him from falling any further down. Define next character. Oh, it's Bobbert. Who doesn't love this socially awkward little robot dude? What Bobbert lacks in emotions, social cues, and general autonomy, he more than makes up for in his genuinely friendly personality and accommodation to others at Elmore Junior High. Oh, wait, this is the villains list. Okay, I can work with this. Bobbert wasn't always the lovable robot buddy we know him as today, especially in season one. In his first major role, the robot, Bobbert proceeds to try and steal Gumball's identity to fit in better with other kids at school, and would have succeeded and destroyed Gumball had he not been rebooted just in time. He was also part of the Reject Club, which threatened to leak Gumball's school record on the internet as payback for refusing their invitation. Thankfully, Bobbert has mellowed out a lot since then, becoming good friends with Gumball, Darwin, and the other characters. He even saves Gumball and Darwin's lives in The Agent. He might have had a rough start, but he's grown into one of Gumball's best friends. Quite the upgrade in our eyes. Carlton, Troy, and Mr. Crease share the next spot. You might remember them as the sweater dudes from, you guessed it, the sweater. Their only real crime, if you can even call it that, was harassing Gumball and Darwin into playing a tennis match against them. They really aren't bad people, honestly, they're just overly competitive and arrogant. Mr. Crease is a little worse, given that he's an adult and maybe shouldn't be harassing middle schoolers into playing tennis matches against his athletes? Far from evil, but certainly not good either. Our next entry is quite a colorful character. Literally, it's Tobias Wilson. Tobias is the rich jock of Elmore Junior High who thinks pretty highly of himself, even though pretty much nobody else does. He can be extremely arrogant and pretentious due to his status, and this often leads to him putting others down, like in The Knights, where he challenges Gumball to a duel to win Penny's heart, oblivious to the fact that she's not interested at all in him. Even further still, in The One, Tobias becomes obsessed with becoming Gumball's best friend to 
to the point where he kills all of Gumball's closest friends to steal their powers. Okay, he doesn't actually do that, but he does go on a rampage, essentially fantasizing about doing so. Despite his extreme arrogance, however, Tobias rarely, if ever, means genuine harm to anyone. He can actually be quite friendly with the other kids at school, superficial though he may be. He doesn't have a ton of particularly redeeming qualities, but he also isn't outright malicious, and in a list like this, that's worth a lot. Masami is another one of Elmore Junior High's resident rich kids, and she doesn't mind flaunting it. She's extremely entitled and will go to any lengths to get what she wants. This is most notable in regards to relationships. In The Pressure, she emotionally manipulates Darwin into kissing her in a treehouse against his will. And in The Storm, she causes chaos all over the school because of her jealousy of Carmen and Alan's relationship, turning into a literal hurricane out of simple jealousy. What keeps her from being any higher on this list in terms of villainy is the fact that she actually isn't as superficial as she seems at first glance. In The Gift, she actually dislikes the excessive attention fellow students give to what they will give Masami for her birthday, simply wanting to be treated as a normal person with normal friends. She's not all that bad, just very unstable. It honestly might be a stretch to call Principal Nigel Brown a villain, but we think there's enough of a basis. As the principal of Elmore Junior High, Nigel Brown is often irresponsible with his duties. He gives excessive detentions and punishments to his students, sometimes getting personal with them. On one occasion, he gave Gumball seven hours of detention for unintentionally hurting his feelings. His worst appearance is definitely in The Fraud, where he threatens to blow up the school to keep his fake diploma from being exposed. This is definitely the worst thing anyone on the list has done so far, and it's nearly enough to call him one of the truly bad guys of the show. That said, Principal Brown has a lot of good qualities as well. First of all, it can be said that, to an extent, he cares about his students, occasionally trying to teach them valuable lessons or check up on families he suspects as being troubled. He even made a home visit to the Watterson house when he suspected Anais was uncomfortable with her home environment. He also genuinely loves and cares for Miss Simeon, and although their relationship sometimes distracts him from his duties as the principal, he has taken the side of Gumball and Darwin against her in the apology, when she tried to get them in trouble without cause. Next door down the list is unfriendly neighborhood Mr. Robinson. Probably the most memorable character on this list so far, Gaylord Robinson is the Squidward to Gumball's Spongebob. A grouchy neighbor through and through, he's the object of Gumball and Darwin's obsessive affection. He's quite consistently mean to them, and pretty much everyone else in Elmore. This includes his wife, who he's constantly and proudly fighting with, and his son Rocky, who he generally views as a disappointment. There's very little keeping him from falling down into the truly evil category, but we do see his good side come out pretty often. In The Poltergeist, it's revealed that despite all of their constant bickering, Mr. Robinson does genuinely love and care for his wife, which is more than we can say for the other way around. We also see that as much as they can and do irritate him, Mr. Robinson does care about Gumball and Darwin and values their friendship. The season 6 episode, The Heart, revolves around him attempting to regain their love and respect after being overheard insulting them, showing that he does have a heart. It's just very deep, deep down under a, a lot of negativity, but hey, it's better than nothing. Rounding out the gray area is Granny Jojo. She's Richard Watterson's mother, and her good qualities begin and end with the fact that she does love her son and grandchildren. Aside from this, however, Granny Jojo is a spiteful woman who's unsupportive of her son's marriage and incredibly controlling over her own. In The Catfish, we see that Granny Jojo doesn't allow Grandpa Louie to have any friends on Elmore Plus, showing that she's extremely possessive. Granny Jojo is also the reason Richard is the way he is. Her overprotective helicopter parent tendencies lead to those in her care being too afraid to do quite literally anything. Like Mr. Robinson, she isn't all bad. Again, she does seem to genuinely love her family, but she doesn't have much that redeems her. She's just barely not bad enough to stay out of the evil territory. Okay, now we're getting into the real bad guys of Elmore. The villains in this section are the bad to evil. It might seem harsh to call Patrick Fitzgerald an outright bad guy. In his first major role in The Knights, he appears to be pretty average. He's stubborn and overprotective, sure, but he genuinely loves his daughter and wants the best for her. Then The Shell comes into play and... Yeah, he pretty much loses our good graces here. It's revealed that Penny's true form underneath her shell is a shape-shifting, fairy-like creature. The reason for this being under wraps for so long is that Patrick had forced Penny to keep her true self locked away because it could cause chaos if poorly controlled. While this is somewhat understandable, it's more so a sign that Patrick prefers to take the easy way out when it comes to parenting. Rather than help Penny be herself and learn to control her powers, he instead makes her bottle them up for years on end to ensure that he doesn't have to suffer the consequences of her instability. 
personality. He's also incredibly unsupportive of her relationship with Gumball. He does make a genuine effort to change going forward, not without some missteps, but while that does keep him from falling any lower, still, awful parenting dude. Ocho comes crawling into the next spot. Though usually a background character, this little spider has a few major roles. Unfortunately, these showcase the worst side of his character. In the phone, he attacks Gumball and Darwin's house after receiving a mean text from them, attempting to kill them. Later on in The Uncle, he puts Gumball through rigorous tests to ensure he's a real friend. He has extreme issues in the realms of both trust and anger, clearly. Further still, he was also part of the Rejects Club from back in Season 1 and, unlike Bobbert, hasn't really redeemed himself all that much. Though as volatile as he is, Ocho isn't usually outright malicious, which at least makes him a little better than a typical bully. He's just a kid who has some issues to work out. One of the most truly terrifying cartoon villains approaches now, the Evil Turtle. Were her legacy in the show solely her first appearance, she'd no doubt be higher on this list. She maliciously attacks the Watersons, making their lives at home a living nightmare. She's highly volatile, always ready to snap at anyone who dares to approach her. She's incredibly violent and dangerous, but that being said, it turns out there's more to her than meets the eye. In The Nest, it's revealed that she was pregnant, trying to escape and find a safe place to lay her eggs. When the Watersons lead her children to her after they wreak havoc all over Elmore, the turtle says goodbye to Gumball, seeming to put their past behind them. While she's far from friendly, at the end of the day, she wasn't exactly evil. Just a mother protecting her little babies. Perhaps a bit too intensely. Tina Rex is up next. She's your typical cartoon bully, using her size and strength and, you know, the fact that she's a literal dinosaur to intimidate the other students. That said, Tina isn't all black and white. She's more like green and brown. And she's also not entirely bad. It's shown through some of her nicer interactions with Gumball and the others that she's really only mean because she's treated like a monster. This shows that Tina isn't exactly evil by nature. That said, she does still default to violence rather quickly, so we had to place her here. There are worse students at Elmore Junior High, like Jamie, for instance. Another typical school bully, she tends to solve her problems with violence, or just have fun with violence. That works too. In The Girlfriend, she intimidates Darwin, forcing him to be her boyfriend. While perhaps not as intimidating as Tina, she's much more mean-spirited and doesn't have much of a softer side to balance it out, making her worse overall. Though her friendship with Anais is kind of nice. Kind of. Ooh, hey guys, don't tell William that I forgot he existed. He'd take it pretty badly. Usually a background character, William's more prominent roles in the series paint him in a pretty nasty light. He threatens Gumball and Darwin upon being ignored by them and blocked on Elmore Plus, and later on, he starts to steal from other students at school, and, again, tries to kill Gumball and Darwin. Even the Reject Club didn't want this dude. Honestly, the only reason he's not ranked as more evil is that we just feel really bad for him. Life can't be easy for a floating eyeball with no appendages and no voice. He's a total outcast, even in a world as objectively odd as Elmore. It doesn't excuse his actions, but still, poor guy. Julius Oppenheimer Jr. is perhaps Elmore High's biggest delinquent. Although a very secondary character, his threats of violence and general criminal activity land him pretty low. Especially awful is his attempt to manipulate Darwin in The Sucker. Although by the end of the episode, he actually learns a valuable lesson and seems to consider Darwin a friend. Who knows? Maybe he's not such a bad guy after all. But he's still gotta be placed down here for his general delinquency. Next up are Nicole's parents, Daniel and Mary Cinecourt. Rarely do they make any appearances in the series, but when they do, it serves to reveal their awful treatment of Nicole, or I suppose Dr. Nicole. They're unsupportive of her marriage, incredibly overbearing regarding her achievements, and just nasty people all around. Many viewers can likely find Nicole relatable here. Growing up with overbearing parents is far from uncommon, so these two can cut particularly deep. Frankie Watterson is Richard Watterson's deadbeat dad. He abandoned Richard at a young age, leaving both him and his mother wounded for life. When he eventually came back into their lives, he attempted to con the Watersons into giving him the deed to their house. He doesn't ultimately go through with it, feeling guilt over his abandonment of Richard years prior. After this event, Frankie does try to be part of the Watersons' lives. He gets some credit for trying to connect with his family after so many years. Unfortunately, the main reason he's below Nicole's parents is that, while both eventually try to make amends and reconnect with their children, Frankie's a criminal on top of having abandoned his family for decades. Yuki Yoshida is Nicole's former friend who held quite a grudge against her due to being beaten by her in a tournament, and therefore being dishonored before her sensei, leaving America in the process. Upon her return, following intense training, she harasses and bullies Nicole into fighting her, even threatening to get her fired from her job and to lose the house. She does get a wake-up call when her and Nicole's fight nearly causes the kids to be crushed under falling debris. The two work together to save their children and reconcile, but the whole harassment and extortion thing can't be entirely overlooked. Next up is Elmore's own own resident Karen, Felicity Parham. She's Billy's mother, and as a result, it's not hard to see where he gets his negative traits from. Felicity is incredible.
incredibly snobbish and arrogant, constantly judging and insulting other citizens in Elmore and living by a my way or the highway code. Her worst appearance is definitely in The Law, where the mere fact of Gumball starting to jaywalk was enough for her to go on a crime spree, which included carjacking, assault, and multiple attempted murders. It was pretty hilarious, sure, but that's all we can give her there. If we had to say something nice about her, she at least seems to love and care for Billy, but knowing her, that's probably just because he's a gifted child. Chi Chi and Ribbit shouldn't be getting any credit unless it's on a list like this. And that goes for the rest of their family, too. In the fan favorite episode, The Copycats, these two follow the Watersons and begin to copy their behavior exactly, uploading it to the internet to get rich and famous. It might not be as violent as some of the other villains on this list, but they're still basically committing plagiarism, stalking, and harassment all at the same time. This is also based off a real-life copycat incident involving the amazing world of Gumball. Look up Miracle Star if you're curious. Hey, remember that time the internet was the main villain in an episode of Gumball? He spreads an embarrassing video of Gumball on the internet, showing that he enjoys encouraging cyberbullying and harassment. In The Intelligence, he attempts to take over the world and destroy humanity. He does fail, but still. If this weren't a kid-friendly show, the internet would probably be in the top three, but attempting world domination is enough to give him a pretty good spot, still. But now it's time to get to the really bad characters, starting with the villain you've all been waiting for, Dr. Wrecker. But you might know him as Ross. I mean, Raj. No, that's not Rob? Yeah, that's it, Rob. The main antagonist of the series. He was a forgotten background character left behind in the void by Gumball and Darwin. After managing to escape, he was permanently disfigured, and upon being discovered living in the Watersons basement, his memory came back and he vowed revenge. At the encouragement of Gumball and Darwin, he found his identity as the villain of Elmore. He attempts to destroy Elmore and the people therein on a regular basis. He especially considers Gumball a nemesis and does whatever he can to ruin his life. That said, he isn't completely evil. For all his terrible deeds, he doesn't actually seem to want to destroy the place, nor even Gumball. He just wants a purpose in life. In the Inquisition, Rob attempts to get the residents of Elmore to transform in order to escape something. This was the final episode, so we don't know exactly what he meant by this, but this was a pretty noble moment for the main villain of the series. Still, only time will tell whether Bob is truly redeemable or not. Oh, sorry, I meant Rob. At some point or another, we've all had a Harold Wilson in our lives. The father of Tobias, Harold generally seemed like a relatively tame, if obnoxious, citizen of Elmore. Definitely an arrogant womanizer, but still not that bad compared to others on this list, right? Enter the cycle, an entire episode dedicated to showing his incredibly mean-spirited habit of bullying Richard. He's been doing this since high school, for seemingly no reason, which makes it even worse. He might be more civilized than other characters on this list, but Harold is undoubtedly a pretty nasty guy, and when he's not being a bully, he's at least being a nuisance. Miss Simeon ended up even lower than expected on our list, and we expected her to be pretty low. Mean teachers are one of the most classic villain archetypes in the book, but Miss Simeon has to be one of the worst. Every good deed Miss Simeon does, she only does out of necessity or because it benefits her in the end. For example, the time she manipulated Gumball and Darwin into writing a letter of recommendation for a reward, only to insult and abandon them right after. Beyond being a simple, grouchy teacher, she actively enjoys the misery of others, especially her own students. Sadism, fraud, harassment, framing children to make them look bad on multiple occasions. Yeah, she certainly earned a bottom five spot. The only thing saving her from an even lower spot is the simple fact that the characters beneath her are even worse. Next up is Sal Left Thumb. What places him so low is, oh my God, he has a spoon. I'm sorry, I, I lost composure there. Let's get this over with. Sal Left Thumb, or Thumbprint Guy, is one of Elmore's most notorious criminals. He can almost always be found robbing someone. But there is some variation here. When he's not robbing someone, he can be found trying to rob someone. Yeah, there's not much else to say. He was also willing to manipulate Gumball and Darwin into helping him rob Larry's gas station, so there are very few lows he won't sink to. Sharing the Bronze Medal of Evil is the single appearance trio of Frank, Grant, and Howdy. These three are puppets from Gumball on Darwin's childhood, and while they initially bring back fun and playful memories, they turn hostile, controlling Darwin and transporting him and Gumball to a realm of imagination where they intend to play with Gumball and Darwin forever. Oh, and by play with, we of course mean torture. Thankfully, they're given away at the Watersons' garage sale, but if Grant attacking Billy is anything to go by, the only thing saving them from the top two of evil is their reasoning. Being that they were sentient, being abandoned by Gumball and Darwin for so many years was clearly detrimental to their sanity 
identity. One of the darkest villains, literally and metaphorically, in the series is Antoine, and he takes our silver medal of evil. The product of Gumball and Darwin breaking the laws of nature itself, Yes, really. Antoine is this failed clone of Anton. Rejected by his creators, this piece of burnt toast commands an army of other clones to attack and kill the original Anton to take over his position. He does this to reconnect with Gumball, his father. Little is known what he would do after this, but his word choice of just you and me suggested nothing good. What's more, he had no issue pulling the fire alarm in Elmore Junior High once his army failed him. To reiterate, they're all pieces of toast? So yeah, th that didn't end too nicely. It would be the equivalent of of losing a battle in war and then calling an airstrike on your own troops for failing you. If anything, we should count ourselves lucky that he didn't last longer than he did. This guy was bad news. But real quick, before we get to our last entry, if you're enjoying this video, do us a huge favor and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We ask because we'd really appreciate the help getting to our next milestone, and we have lots more videos we'd love to share with you. Thanks so much. The rest of this list was difficult to order, but this was an easy choice. The gold medal of evil goes to Hot Dog Guy. Honestly, who else? could it be? His relentless pursuit of making Gumball's life as awkward as humanly possible proves him as a ruthless, sadistic overlord. Who knows what other plans this sinister sausage has in store? Okay, just kidding. The real gold medal of evil was obvious from the start. It has to go to Mrs. Robinson. As much as we hate to be predictable, there's really no way around it. Mrs. Robinson is evil incarnate. Mr. Robinson might be mean and bitter, but like we said earlier, he isn't heartless. Imagine his mean-spiritedness, cruelty, and bitterness, then amp all of those up to a hundred. You might then have someone half as evil as Mrs. Robinson. The episode, The the Wicked is evidence that she has absolutely no redeeming qualities. She'll wreak havoc however and wherever she can, just for entertainment. Even when Darwin nearly chokes to death in her driveway, she does nothing. Perfectly fine with the prospect of a child dying a preventable death in her own driveway. When one episode provides enough evidence to put a character at the top, you just know they're truly deserving of the gold medal of evil. And that's it? <sighs> that was a lot, but for the grand finale, here are some bonus medals. The Darwin medal, sadly can't go to Darwin, but to Tobias. His delusional mentality around girls is proof that he's far from the sharpest tool in the shed. The pride medal goes to Nicole's parents. Their pride allowed them to lose touch with their child for decades, all because they didn't approve of her marriage. The sloth medal belongs to Chi Chi and Ribbit. Come on, their whole livelihood is just straight up plagiarism. What's lazier than that? The wrath medal was a tough decision, but we're giving it to the evil turtle. She may have only been trying to protect her babies, but that doesn't excuse terrorizing the Watersons as well as the rest of Elmore to such an extent. The envy medal, on the other hand, was easy. Masami. Come on, she practically tried to wreck the school because Alan liked Carmen rather than her. The greed medal goes to Harold Wilson. Upon believing he'd won the lottery, he took complete advantage of his wealth, even dumping his wife for a younger woman. Finally, the lust medal goes to Sarah. Her penchant for shipping real people and her obsession with Gumball and Darwin made this another easy choice.